So your long-term play for this week is your Kevin Eastman releases. I have the new ones that came out right now, but we're gonna go into some more than just this, correct? Right, yeah, see, I cheated a little bit. We got two releases um, on, on this list, but I, I can't highlight one without highlighting the other. Um, talking about convention coverage, another convention I've covered for CBSI several times. I, I missed it this year, um, but shout out to Ultimate Comics in Raleigh, North Carolina. I've covered North Carolina Comic Con for CBSI uh, several years. Um, and uh, last year, I had the privilege of covering, and Kevin Eastman was there. And Kevin Eastman held a panel. There was a TMNT panel. It was Kevin Eastman, Ben Bishop, who's an amazing artist who does a lot of TMNT work. Um, and Tom Waltz, who is the writer of the current TMNT series and uh, the creative director of all of that. Um, and they kind of kicked off telling everybody about drawing blood and what they were working on. And uh, I was immediately hooked uh, on the concept. It was originated as a Kickstarter. Um, you're talking about a Kickstarter for a graphic novel that did $106,000 in in fundraising it had like 1175 backers um there's three covers to the original graphic no the original graphic novel is a volume one it's called spilled ink um to give you a little backstory on the story um the story is about a character named shane bookman i believe um I, I read the book like a year ago so i'm a little little bit fuzzy i, I want to reread it in the individual floppies but the character shane bookman he and his brother created a comic called uh, The Radically Ronin Ragdolls. Now, this story is so meta. It's, it, again, written by Kevin Eastman, and it clearly draws from Kevin's own experiences. And I've long felt like a great movie would be a biopic on Eastman and Laird. But like many things, reality can be a little boring. And this story takes a lot of the elements of Kevin Eastman's life and then kind of adds in fantasy and fiction and turns it on its head. So Shane Bookman creates these characters. He has these this incredible success. Uh, his characters end up spawning a, um, a cartoon show. And then, like a lot of people who have success, he burns out. Um, he, his success kind of gets to him a bit. He doesn't take care of his money. He becomes kind of a drunk and drug user. Um, he's got a lot of hangers on. Got, uh, his assistant is a guy who used to do uh, voiceover on the show. But I, again, we talk about my speculation comes from, is this adaptable? This is an incredible TV show. I'm telling you, this would make an incredible show. And this is just volume one. So this issue number one that released yesterday from Kevin Eastman Studios it is a, the a one fourth of the graphic novel that released on Kickstarter, and again, below on the graphic novel. I think the graphic novel is going to be a good spec play. All, the three covers, especially the covers that were like um, tiered exclusives for Kickstarter backers, I'd keep an eye out for those. But this is going honestly. This series is going completely under the radar. The people who are paying attention to this are TMNT Kevin Eastman diehards, which again. I talk about IDW stuff, so I advocate to you guys on a weekly basis that these people are out there, and they are out there strong. Um, shout out to Paul Wiederhold um, from the Tales from the Flipside, CBSI. He's a guy who's such a TMNT diehard. I've used him as an example in my mind of these guys are out there. They have to have it. They, they, they want it all. And I was at a panel where I watched Kevin Eastman talking about this book and kind of bore TMNT fans. They were, they were like, we don't want to hear this. We want to hear we want to hear Ninja Turtles. Um, and he completely flipped them, and they were into this story. Now, releasing this this new comic book day, along with Drawing Blood number one, Spilled Ink, is actually the comic Radically Ronin Ragdolls. So they actually dropped, again, talk about meta, the comic from within the comic, giving you kind of a first appearance of these characters. Not only do I think this could be a show, I think Radically Ronin Ragdolls could be an animated show. So I think Netflix could pick up this entire, or somebody of that nature, uh, Amazon, or um, I know uh, Apple is big in trying to get their phone going. Somebody could pick this up. And this, the, the, one of the struggles with TMNT long-term speculation is from a movie standpoint. Um, TMNT is owned by Nickelodeon. So every movie that comes out is always going to be skewed towards that Nickelodeon audience. We are never, whether we like it or not, we are never going to get 
a version of TMNT like some of the series that maybe we grew up on. We're not going to get um, Casey Jones with a machine gun. It's just not going to happen. <coughs> but there's a chance we'll get radically Ronin ragdolls, and we will get those types of stories given to us in a different way, but greatly reflecting the TMNT kind of lore and what made it popular. And I think that this is a great spec play. It's going completely under the radar. Again, from Kevin Eastman studio debut release from his own label. And it's something I think to keep an eye on because I don't think the print run is going to be huge. You, you got to be cautious with a new label because we don't know their printing practices. We hope they're not going to, you know, do anything that tanks the book, but Kevin Eastman is a smart guy. He's been in the game a long time. Um, Super nice guy if you meet him at conventions. Um, but I, I'm i really strongly believe in this book. I think that it's I, – I put it as the long-term play because it hasn't gotten enough. I don't know if Brian showed it yet, but that the other person who deserves a lot of credit is Ben Bishop, the artist. Ben Bishop was a guy who was going to conventions. He, you, you ever, If you've ever been to conventions, there's always guys who are artists, guys and gals. They're artists who haven't made it yet, and they're tabling trying to show off their art. Well, that was Ben Bishop. He was he was kind of at conventions, showing off his art, and he did a lot of TMNT stuff, and um, it caught Eastman's eye. And he ended up bringing him in, giving him work. Uh, Tom Waltz, who, again, runs the TMNT universe for uh, IDW, they brought brought him in, put him to work. The book that st- stood out for me is Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ghostbusters 2, number four, the retailer uh, incentive variant. A lot of people have seen this variant, love this variant. This is a killer. And as you saw it, it was one of those variants. You ever see a cover art and you love it? And the next question is, who did that art? And when I saw this one, that was kind of my reaction. I saw a big print hanging from a guy I did ne- never saw at a convention. And I said, wow, that's an awesome cover. Who did that art? And then I met Ben Bishop, young guy, very kind of aggressive, energetic in this industry. And I said, man, this guy is a guy to keep an eye out for. And he's so talented that he hasn't just rested on doing these. He went and teamed with Kevin Eastman to to bring you Drawing Blood, artist on the series. He's doing all the interiors. He did covers as well as Eastman. Um, Be on the lookout for some of those covers. Those Radically Ronin Ragdoll covers are amazing. They homaged some classic T8 Mage Mutant Ninja Turtles covers. Um, And uh, I, I just can't say enough again about what I think of the speculation play of this book. I think the fact that um, if you're going to neg me on this, you're going to say, yeah, people aren't talking about it again. That's why I like it as a long-term play. I think it's getting overlooked. You can still grab this book for cover price um, at most large retailers. Um, I think it was largely overlooked. And another thing that forces things to be overlooked is where they are located in previews. Um, If you're a speculator, you should be reading the previews magazine every month. You should be checking it out because it kind of gives you an idea of what dealers are looking at. And um, I think that that book, where its location and previews being such a small press book, it, it kind of got overlooked. Um, so be on the lookout for this book. Um, I think it is heavily adaptable. It's a good, dark, humorous, um, kind of action-packed story that I think if you love indie comics, I think you're going to love Drawing Blood. And it's a comic about comics. That's the great thing. Um, so it, it kind of plays into the fanboy in all of us. And it, when, when I'm reading it, I imagine the character as Kevin Eastman. Um, while I know he didn't do all this, this isn't the way his life was, that's, that's the way it feels to me. And I think that that adds kind of an element to this. So be on the lookout for that. I'm almost more bullish on the Radically Ronin Ragdolls uh, one shot as a speculation play, but I think that again, there's money in both. I think there, I think you're going to get a show, and I think you're going to get a cartoon at some point in some form or fashion. Um, so be on the lookout for those. Uh, and uh, let me know in the comments if you grab these books, if these are on your radar, or if they weren't on your radar, if anything I said helped put it on your radar. <laughs> <laughs>